Hey everybody, so it was a light night in the NHL last night, so there's really not much to talk about as far as current stuff. So, I'm going to talk about some of my hockey memories, not necessarily my the favorite or best or anything like that. Just 10 random memories that really that came to mind to me for me today. And I'm just going to talk about them. I've been watching hockey for a long time, pretty much my whole life. And I'm not I'm trying to stick to kind of older ones. So before 2010 or 2010 and earlier, anything after that, it's kind of too recent to really be like a memory. It's more, you know, I should remember that, but Prior to 2010 and earlier, these are kind of like things I remember from going pretty far back. So, first up, this is my first hockey memory. First thing I really remember from the NHL, the 2001 Stanley Cup. Uh, it was, as a Bruins fan and from a family of Bruins fans, for Ray Bork to finally get a Stanley Cup was huge. And I remember watching this series with my dad, and I was only four or five at the time. And to see Ray Bork finally lift the cup, it, it was just awesome. And he, he never could do it in Boston, which wasn't his fault. But he went to Colorado, and he got it. And I love that Avalanche team. Uh, the early 2000s Avalanche were one of, some of my favorite teams of all time. Um, I still have a Joe Sackick picture uh, poster up on my wall in my room. Um, that I just I love that team. They were definitely my second favorite team at the time, behind the Bruins. Um, now I don't really care m much about the Avalanche, but um, back back in this day, they were really really one of my favorite teams um they had some incredible players uh, obviously joe sackett peter forsberg um chris drury was on that team he was really young um alex tangay adam foot rob blake uh patrick wall was the goalie one of the greatest of all time um so yeah this was really my earliest hockey memory and one of my favorites especially with Ray Bork getting the cup, finally. Next up, 2003, also Stanley Cup Finals, Scott Stevens hit on Paul Correa. Um, I, rem I was pretty young at the time, and I remember not being sure if Correa was dead or not, because I didn't really understand exactly what had happened. Obviously, I saw the hit. And then Korea was just laying there completely motionless, like I thought he might actually be dead. Now obviously, now that I'm older, that's kind of a dumb thing to think. He just got knocked out, but back then I didn't know, pr probably didn't even know the difference. But this was an iconic moment in really NHL history. Like if you think about, you know, huge hits, this is one of the first ones to come to mind. Extremely dirty by today's standards. This, I'm even even for the rules back then. It was it was interference. He, Korea had gotten rid of the puck long before he got drilled, but by today's standards, Stevens would be like out of the league. That would all time dirty play. But back then, uh, hits like that were pretty common, and Stevens was the master of it. He was probably the best open ice hitter of all time. So. Definitely remember this. This was a wild moment and one of the most iconic hits of all time. Um, <clears throat> 2004 Stanley Cup, Vincent LeCavalier and Jerome McGinley dropping the gloves. Um, this was awesome. Uh, I have the f final game of this series on tape somewhere. Or maybe the tape got thrown out, but at one point I had it taped. And I... I loved this. This was a weird finals because I liked both teams. Like I really, I liked the Lightning. I loved Le Cavalier, St. Louis, Brad Richards. They were all pretty young at the time. Um, I believe Nikolai Hobby Bulin was their goalie. Uh, this Tortorella was their coach. I really loved that Lightning team. I also loved the Flames because I'm a. I've always been a huge Jerome McGinley fan. I love 
the way that he played. I love those power forward guys who could score 30 goals and are also willing to fight and play physically. And I, I love players like that. Again, has always been one of my favorites. And so this was an, kind of an odd Stanley Cup because in a way I, I wanted both teams to win. But this is one of the most recognizable playoff fights in recent memory, probably in NHL history. Um, two star players, captains, dropping the gloves and going at it in the Stanley Cup Finals. It was just an awesome moment. Joe Thornton traded from the Boston Bruins to the San Jose Sharks in 2005. Um, I remember when this happened, and I remember who we got in return. Brad Stewart, Wayne Primo, and Marco Sturm. Um, hindsight's twenty twenty, but looking at it now, we didn't get nearly, the Bruins did not get nearly enough back in return for Joe Thornton. Thornton went on to be one of the greatest playmakers of the whole modern era. Um, all-time, uh, up there in all-time assists, what really a superstar point producer for years and years and years and still going pretty strong in San Jose Wayne Primo was kind of a third line and eh, he was alright but didn't last very long Brad Stewart middle pair defenseman um, he kind of, he bounced around teams and Marco Sturm was the best guy we got out of that trade he was a decent second line scorer had some good years for the Bruins, but in hindsight, those three were not nearly enough for the player that Joe Thornton was. Should we? I mean, we should have gotten, you know, multiple first-round picks for a guy like that, and we did not. So, turned out to be a pretty bad trade from the Bruins' end, but it is what it is, and that was, you know, years ago now. Um. Yes, the 2006 Buffalo Sabres playoff run. Um, this team, this was the coming out party for guys like Derek Roy, Jason Pominville, Ryan Miller. Um, I loved this Sabres team. Even though they were division rivals of the Bruins, this, I loved this Sabres team, especially once they got into the playoffs. I wanted them to go all the way. Um, so, I, Just some of the players on that team... They were just awesome. Uh, I remember it was like when I first started to really get a grasp on guys like Danny Briere, Max Finneganoff, J.P. Dumont, um, Roy and Pominville. I loved those two. This was their coming out party. Um, just great team. Uh, Brian Campbell on the back end. Um, I remember this team. I think they were the four seed that year but they had an underdog feel to them like nobody really thought that they were going to go far and they did go pretty far but they lost to the Hurricanes and the Hurricanes went on to win the cup that year and I was sad because I wanted Buffalo to win it um, more Buffalo 2007 more specifically February 22nd 2007 huge brawl between Buffalo and Ottawa um, this was awesome if you haven't seen this, which I'm sure most of you have, look this up on YouTube right now because this was an all-time brawl for the, the 2000s, for that era. This was awesome. Um, Chris Neal delivers a nasty headshot on Chris Drury, and the next face-off, <laughs> Buffalo obviously just watched their captain get obliterated by a fourth liner. Was not very happy. They send out their fourth line. Ottawa does not. Ottawa sends out guys, Jason Spezza, Danny Heatley, their, their top players. Uh, and the, from there, just all hell breaks loose. The fourth liners from Buffalo just start beating up on anyone they can get close to. The goalies get in it. We have Andrew Peters fighting Ray Emery, so a goalie versus player fight, which almost never happens. Uh, it was just absolutely awesome. All-time moment. One of my favorite brawls in NHL history. Uh, to also, 2007, Anaheim wins the Stanley Cup, and I loved this Anaheim team because they were so tough. It's no secret I love tough hockey, you know, lots of fights, physical players. 
this Anaheim team was so tough, and to see a team like that just bully their way through everybody and win the cup was awesome. And not not only were they tough, they were really, really good, too. They had some incredible players on that team. And it wasn't all just, you know, fighting and brawn for them. They had some serious skill as well. This one, strictly because I'm a Bruins fan, this moment is absolutely huge. Mark Savard's OT winner in Game 3 versus Montreal in the 2008 playoffs. And the Bruins ended up losing this series in 7. But this goal was huge. This got them back into the series. This goal is the reason this series went 7. And I remember when this happened, it was just so like insane. Everyone was just going nuts. Um you got to remember, for most of the 2000s, the Bruins were really, really bad. Like, they stunk. They were a last-place team. So, they go into the... they In 07-08, they barely make the playoffs. They were supposed to be one of the worst teams in the league. They sneak into the 8th spot, and they get their arch-rival in the first round. And this series was a coming-out party for the Bruins and a look to the future. This series showed that the Bruins were headed in the right direction and that while before they were really, really bad, they were going to be good. And they ended up really from 2008 on being a perennial playoff team and a good team. And then in 2011, they won the Cup. And then they went back to the Cup again in 2013. So this was really the Bruins coming-out party as a you know, formidable team in the Eastern Conference, and for the eight seed to take the one seed all the way to seven games, it was just, this goal in this series gave hope to Bruins fans. Uh, the 2008 and 2009 finals, Pittsburgh and Detroit meet back to back in the Stanley Cup final. Um, this is important because I hated both teams. I could not stand the Penguins because I cannot stand Sidney Crosby, and I always hated Detroit because they were so soft. They were, played that European soft hockey. I could not stand either teams. I remember watching these both these Stanley Cup Finals, hoping that no one would win, even though that's not possible. I just I hated both these teams. And that's why it sticks out for me, because I can't remember a Stanley Cup since then where I couldn't stand both teams. Um, I just, I hate, I've always hated Crosby. I think he's a fantastic player, but he's such a crybaby and a whiner. And it's gotten better. He has gotten better with that as time's gone on, but still you see it every now and then pop up where he just whining and crying to the refs just like shut up play hockey um and then detroit detroit went from having guys like bob probert and joey kocher and then darren mccarty having tough guys and being a pretty tough team to through the late 90s and then into the through really the until now basically they played this soft European wimpy style. They were always near the bottom of the league in fights through most of you know around this time, and I couldn't stand it. Um, they, I I hate soft hockey, and they were the epitome of soft hockey. They rode their skill all the way to the Stanley Cup multiple times, but I still hated them because they had zero toughness. Last one. Patrick Kane's 2010 Cup winner, and this was this one was really memorable because no one was really sure if it went in at first, and I think the moment would have been a little more had a little more oomph behind it um, if it was in a game seven, not a game six. But an overtime winner to win the Stanley Cup is a huge moment to begin with, and then it was just so weird to watch because no one really knew if it went in for a few you know like a decent amount of time like seconds went by it before anyone even knew um, I believe Michael Layton was the Flyers goalie and he was trying to hold the post and Kane just flung it at the net it got through Layton and no, but no one could really see it Kane knew it went in 
because he came around the net celebrating, but the ref was just kind of standing there, and it took him a second to signal goal. Everyone else was just kind of standing there, like, what just happened? And it wasn't in a Game 7, but it was still an o a game winner to win the Stanley Cup, so that's an all-time moment. That also was um, an important moment for Chicago because Chicago quickly went from be being in the mid-2000s, one of the worst teams in the NHL, to winning a Stanley Cup in 2010 and then went on to win two more. So this, um, those, are, those are my moments that I just thought I'd talk about. Um, not, obviously not all of my hockey memories, but just some quick ones that came to mind. And uh, maybe I'll do this again with some more down the road, but I just wanted to do something last night. wasn't didn't have much for to talk about in the, in the NHL, so I figured I'd look back on some stuff. So like, comment, share, subscribe, spread the word. We want this channel to grow. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys soon.